education um, and a fine history. And I think the youth of today um, find it an attractive option, um, providing them with an opportunity for adventure and travel. Um, and I think the operations in Afghanistan and previously in Iraq have just heightened people's um, understanding about what the military have been doing. But you might have thought that actually the bad news, the loss of life, the, the injuries would actually put young people off. I think we have to see all of, we have to see the casualties um, against the context of the huge amounts of good work and progress that we've actually managed to achieve uh, during our tours of Afghanistan. And during this most recent tour, there's been many, many examples where we've really changed people's lives. The good news stories are, are absolutely uh, fundamental here. Um, and they provide the, um, you know, the backdrop to, you know, to the casualties. And I remember that all our soldiers are volunteers um, and we go willingly to Afghanistan um, and uh, carry out our role there uh, to the best of our abilities. Colonel Woodham, thank you very much. Later on Look East, a day goes by without another set of spending cuts being announced. But while governments across Europe are cutting back, one big institution isn't. The European Parliament this week rejected an appeal from one of our MEPs to reduce the amount that it spends. Our political correspondent Andrew Sinclair reports. This is the week when MEPs pay their monthly visit to Strasbourg. For four days, this magnificent and expensive building comes alive as dozens of laws affecting all aspects of life are passed. During the debate on next year's budget, this appeal from a local MEP. It is vital that we recognise what our member states are doing to control their own budgets. We must approach our own with the same sense of responsibility and realism. There have been riots in Greece, demonstrations in Germany and Spain. Across Europe, governments have announced cuts totalling £160 billion as they try to reduce their deficits. But within the European Parliament, there is no serious talk about cutting costs. Instead, member states are being asked to give an extra 6% to the EU's budget. This place is really behaving as if there is no recession. People are suffering right across the European Union, and the European Parliament here seems to be completely oblivious of this. The improved seafront at Lowestoft, Great Yarmouth's new harbour, this new grain silo in Cambridgeshire, just three projects recently funded by Europe. The extra money is for similar projects across the continent, which the EU says must not be stopped in a recession. This moment, to cut away, let's say, all the funding from structural funds, you will create even worse reactions and maybe you will undermine also the economic development in this country. But things aren't helped by the fact that the Parliament is asking for more staff and increased allowances for them. And then there's the cost of moving between the two parliaments in Brussels and Strasbourg, £200 million a year. And should this trip to Strasbourg by a group from Colchester really be subsidised? The real cost of the European Union is £2 per person per week. It's important that we hold it to account. It's important that we uh, seek uh, good value for money where we can. But let's keep this in perspective. The British government wants to pay less to Europe, but it's got a fight on its hands. This institution believes it already gives good value for money. Andrew Sinclair, BBC Look East in Strasbourg. And there's a special edition of The Politics Show from Strasbourg this Sunday at 11 o'clock here on BBC One. The process to find new companies to run the rail network in Essex, Suffolk and Norfolk is being scrapped while a review takes place into the way franchises are awarded. The Greater Anglia franchise, which covers intercity and cross-country routes, will now be re-advertised later this year. Competition for the route from Southend to London will begin in the autumn of next year. A fire at a farm in Suffolk in which 300 pigs were killed is not being treated as suspicious. Crews from across the county spent nine hours fighting the fire at Ockold near Eye. It started just before one o'clock yesterday morning. There's been some good news for a charity which cares for children who are terminally ill. Quiddenham Hospice in Norfolk will get money from the NHS so that nurses can work in the community. The fixtures for the new football season have been published today. Recently promoted Norwich City start life in the championship against Watford, while Ipswich Town travel to Middlesbrough. In League One, Colchester United face a long trip to Exeter. And in League Two, Southend begin life in a lower league, taking on Stockport County.
The actor Tom Chambers won the BBC's Strictly Come Dancing and plays lady killer Sam Strachan in Holby City, but today he was getting fruity in Essex during the annual strawberry race in Tiptree. Kevin Birch was there. For everyone here, strawberry picking is a serious business. Well, for most of them anyway. <laughs> this is what they're after, the little scarlet, and they have one hour. Looking on, celebrity supporters Tom Chambers and his Holby co-star, Rebecca Grant. I was expecting to get my hands dirty and be picking like mad, but luckily I've actually just moved house. I've got a very stiff lower lumbar. So, uh, so I've actually managed to crawl out of it, but I'm, I'm Shit, watching. Lumber. <laughs> yeah, sorry, just, just, City. just down there. I'll tell you what, if I was picking strawberries today, I'd be in trouble. Oh, but, um, I'll beat you, though. I was yeah. looking forward to kicking your ass. Really. We were. There was going to be some strong competition mm. just between us, because that's what it's like. Yeah. 200 pickers took part from around the world. Many come back year after year. So what's the knack? I think we're just grabbing, but there is, there is apparently a technique, which kind of goes something like this. You kind of grab, grab the little scarlet there from the back, pop it off, and you get none of the green and just a fresh little strawberry there. It's quite and a skill, there. isn't it? Well, I think so. Got to be fairly nimble with the fingers. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll carry on and see if we can you know, raise some big money for charity. Three, two, one. Well, as you can see, they've all come in now for the official weigh-in. They're all hanging on to their trays tightly. They don't want to drop them at this stage. And it's all fairly tension, though. They take this quite seriously. After all, remember, there is a golden strawberry at stake. And this is it, commissioned to mark 125 years of jam-making in Tiptree. Sandra Barrow took the prize, a moment sure to be preserved long in the memory. Kevin Birch, BBC Look East.